Good evening, Internet. Welcome back to another night of Strange and Scary Games. Tonight we've got Paranormal Sight, The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. This is a visual novel uh, based, uh, well, released by Square Enix um, last year. I saw somebody say that it was one of the hidden horror gems of last year, uh, so I felt like we should probably go through it and see what all the fuss was about. Let's get into it. Ah, you are here. Welcome. Welcome. I have been eagerly awaiting your arrival. Allow me to introduce myself. I am the storyteller. Pleased to make your acquaintance. I shall be your guide going forward. Now then, before we begin our story, there are several things I must bring to your attention. The first, this game uses autosave. The game will automatically save at regular intervals, so you may stop playing at any time. Saving is a very important element of games. It is the only way to keep your memories in place. If you do not wish to rely on autosave alone, you can also save manually via the menu. Next, please look at the upper right of the screen. This is the menu button. Uh, I'm covering it. There we go. Uh, that seems wrong. From here, you can check the text log, view useful files, and switch auto mode on and off. You can also adjust brightness, volume, and other settings in the options menu. For instance, if there is a voice you would prefer not to hear, you can mute it by setting the voice volume to zero. I suggest you check the brightness, controls, and other settings now before going on. The Storyteller, sex, question mark, occupation, question mark. The Storyteller guides those who visit Paranormal Sites. Everything else about him remains a mystery. Files updated. How to play. You can look around in most situations when you're able to use the controller. Try looking around for hidden clues. Should I play with controller? A variety of settings can be changed from the options menu. All right. Eh. I'll explain other essential functions when the time is right. Ah, there is one more thing I wish to confirm before we continue. It would feel strange to go on without knowing your name. Please, tell me what I may call you. Uh, I'm assuming we're in Japan, so I should be... Endo. I see. I'm right, is it? Sure. Hmm. Are you certain you wish to be called Arm Rights? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, how rude of me. Please pardon my mistake. I was sure that's what you said, but it seems I was wrong. What came over me? Let me try again. You wish to be called Ando. Whatever. A name is a name. I see. Very good. I seem to have gotten it right this time. All right. Now that we have been properly introduced, let us begin our story. Ahem. From antiquity to present day, regardless of how society and civilization evolve, death has been a constant presence that none have ever escaped. Whether it is one's own or that of someone close, death is always a difficult thing to accept. This is an immutable reality, a value shared by all, no matter the age in which they live. In fact, oral traditions reflecting people's fears and prayers regarding death still remain. Ghosts, spirits, and so on. Similarly, in an attempt to defy death, many curses, rituals, and customs have been born, from burning a spirit incense to summoning the souls of the dead. That's kind of a big leap. Some of those secret arts are still being passed down to this day. Ah, on that note, Endo. This may seem rather abrupt, but... Is there someone you wish to bring back from the dead? 
There are many people. Uh, what if... What if you had one chance to use the secret art of resurrecting the dead? Yes, if you had the power to bring someone back to life one time, and one time only, what would you do? Uh, this is kind of a big choice. I see. Very interesting. Yes, yes, that is what I thought you would say. What seems to be the matter? Ah, you want to know what this box that has been sitting here is? It's quite the curious thing, isn't it? This is called a color television. The world I will be sending you to is full of devices such as this that do not exist in the age you are from. In this era, a color television can be found in nearly every household. That is not all. For example, if a person should wish to contact someone while they are out of their home, they use public telephones like this that can be found all over the city. Can you imagine what life would be like in such a time? I'd be thrilled to have you continue the story, Endo. After all, that is why you came here, no? So let us begin. I have kept you waiting long enough. I present you to Paranorma Site, a bizarre tale surrounding the curse known as the Rites of Resurrection. A peculiar yarn ensnaring nine men and women in a fierce fight for their lives that is unravels. Some of the characters appearing within surely share your views on the Rite of Resurrection. I imagine those who have lost someone dear to them will feel particularly strong about it, clinging to it as their last desperate hope. The first I shall introduce, a man named Shogo Okie, is one of them. Shogo Okie, male, office worker. Shogo is an unremarkable young man entering his third year of working in the planning department at Hihaku Soaps, a chemical company headquartered in Sumida. Born in western Tokyo to an ordinary family around the same time as the birth of Color TV, he grew up amidst the boom of special effects heavy action films, anime, variety shows, professional baseball, and pop music. Shogo graduated from a famous private university in Tokyo and has since settled into an apolitical mindset, common among those of his generation, with no strong ideals and no particular dis dissatisfaction with the world as it develops around him. He is content to just go with the flow, having stumbled into his current position by pure chance. And it is safe to assume he will follow the stereotypical path of working his way up the ladder, starting a family and remaining at the same company until retirement. He plays folk guitar as a hobby and is currently looking for a girlfriend. So he's boring, is what you're saying? Breaking news! Oh, I wonder what it could be at such a time. Early this morning, the body of a drowned man was discovered at a park in Sumida City. Police have identified the body as Shogo Okie, the 25-year-old man who worked at a company in the area. As signs of a struggle were found, the Sumida police suspect foul play and have launched an investigation. Oh, excuse me. Please pay no mind to what you have just seen. Goodness, you, are, you very nearly saw something that would have spoiled the story. Just pretend you did not see that. Let us turn back time back a smidge. Let us turn time back a smidge. Let us turn back time back a smidge. Yeah, I had it right the first time. Let us turn back time back a smidge and start again from there. Do you understand? You saw nothing. You know nothing. This story is a work of fiction. All locations, characters, organizations, legends, etc. that appear in this game have no relation to reality. Squeenix presents... Shogo? Shogo, are you alright? Hey, can you hear me? Hey, that's not a proper answer. Earth Kishogo Okie. What do you think you're doing, falling asleep here? You gave me quite the shock. Come on now, up with you, up. Oh, 
Okay, and... There. How's that, all right? Do you feel dizzy? Have a headache? Are your humors off balance? I'm fine, I think. There's definitely nothing wrong with my humors, though my head's still a little fuzzy. Office worker, Shogo Okie. Uh-oh, that doesn't sound good. Turn your head around a little bit to see if you can walk all right. When the game is in your control, drag the screen or move the right stick to look around. Try looking around your surroundings now. That's kind of cool. Good, good. You seem to be fine. What a relief. Do you remember anything? Like where we are and what we were doing? The Rite of Resurrection? Huh? Wait a second. When did I tell you about that? I mean, I guess I must have, seeing as you know that name, but... Weird. Anyway, you still seem a little out of it. Why don't you look around a bit more? Look around and select things you want to investigate. You can converse with people by selecting their faces. Uh, surroundings? Hmm. Where are we? Oh, right. This is Sumida City, Tokyo. We're at Kinshibori Park, near Kinshicho Station. Yoko brought me here, saying she needed my help with something important. It's just past midnight. That explains why there's nobody else around. Files updated. Uh, Sumida City. Uh, one of the 23 districts of Tokyo, located in the eastern part of the city. It is surrounded by Sumida, Arakawa, and Kiyunaka rivers. At the start of the Showa era, the area was still divided into two districts. The southern Hanjo the northern Mukojima, uh, but they were merged into one district after the Second World War. It is said to be named after the Sumida River and the banks that uh, line it. Unlike the river, however, its name uses the character for ink rather than that for corner. Uh, even now, people still frequently mix up the two. Despite suffering extensive damage from both the Great Kanto earthquake and air bombings during the war, Sumida managed to recover and come out on top every time. Once filled with samurai residences, it is now home to a thriving industrial district and many residential zones, though evidence of its previous character can still be found all around the area. Um, one of the really cool things when I was in China is that with, um, with older cities, they tended to build up around temples and then leave the temples intact. So sometimes you would be walking through a city and find yourself in just like a thousand year old temple. Um, and that, that was really cool. Uh, I've heard that s similar things happen in Japan where like the old buildings, they've just built the city up around the old buildings. So sometimes you're just walking through the city and stumble upon it like a, a thousand year old building. Uh, major landmarks, Eco Temple, former Yasuda Gardens, site of Kira Kozu Kenosuke, Kozu Kenosuke. Uh, residence Hanjo Matsu Zakacho Park, Sumida Park, Tokyo Metropolitan Memorial Hall, uh, Mukojima Hayakayan Gardens, uh, Kinshibori Park. Conveniently close to Kinshicho Station and surrounded on all, all sides by roads, this paved park is a popular spot for people to meet or relax. Kinshibori Park was named after the Kinshibori Canal, part of the South Warigasui Canal, which could once be found nearby. In fact, the area's name, Kinshicho, was also derived from the canal. Uh, we already got those. We still don't have any of the mysteries. Or the curses. We only have one gameplay guide. Uh, playground. That's an interesting looking playground. I bet it's crawling with kids during the daytime, but it's kind of peaceful here at night. Uh, we've seen the playground. We've seen our surroundings. We're about to get jump scared. Uh, these telephone booths are all over town. The lights are always on so they can be used in emergency. What is with the telephones? I understand that there are telephone booths. A small booth containing a public telephone, most often found in parks or along roads. Local telephone calls can be placed at a rate of 10 yen per three minutes. I think that's less than a cent per minute. Uh, more recently, telephone booths capable of accepting prepaid cards known as telephone cards have begun to spread, enabling one to make a phone call without the need for a small change. Telephone booths in the downtown area tend to be plastered with unauthorized advertisements and leaflets, a problem that has shown no signs of slowing down. Uh, I remember that in um, London, there used to be a bunch of like 
uh, if you go into the, the um, uh, phone booths, they would just be plastered with advertisements, like uh, top to bottom. Uh, I guess we're not getting jump scared. Right. That's Yoko Fukunaga. Uh, good, at least I can remember that much. I first met her about a month ago. She's 23, works as a housekeeper, and is really into the occult. If I think harder, I can probably recall a little more about what's going on. We've only met a few times, but we've really hit it off. She's a lot of fun to be around. I have no idea how she feels, though. I get the sense she isn't thinking about me that way right now. But I know I've got a thing for bubbly girls who are into dark things like the occult. Uh, that's fair. Uh, paranormal fanatic, Kyoko Fukunaga. Uh, after obtaining a junior college degree, Yoko started working as a housekeeper. Due to her ability to see things others cannot, she has received strange looks from a young age. This ability spurred an interest in the paranormal, which she continues to pursue to this day. Following graduation, Yoko worked a desk job at a trading company, but butted heads with her supervisor, who was skeptical of the supernatural and quit within a year. Now, while, we're working, as a, now, while working as a housekeeper, she spends her days devouring mystery magazines and visiting haunted spots. As she vowed to live life true to herself and never change for the sake of others, Yoko has no regrets about the path she has taken. Yoko has a dog, a, Shibu, a Shiba Inu named Ogopogo, who has been by her side since she was a student. I love Shiba Inus. Uh, we've already seen her. Yikes! That was close. If we died before we got our hands on the Rite of Resurrection, everything would be over before it started. Uh... I think the only thing left to do is recall. Let me think. What can I remember? Okay. Her name is Yoko Fukunaga. We met about a month ago. What's the deal with this park? It was around noon on one of my days off. I had just finished running some errands in Kinshicho and was here taking a quick break. I was just looking around absentmindedly. when I noticed this girl loitering her about. She was digging up holes in the sandbox and searching around the playground. She seemed to be enjoying herself, talking to the animal figures and put it, petting them on their heads. My, curios My curiosity got the better of me before long and I struck up a conversation. Hey, are you looking for something? A date maybe? Hmm? Ah, sorry, I must look like a total weirdo. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say I'm looking for something. If you want, I could give you a hand. Really? I mean, that'd be a huge help, but... But? Are you really just a good Samaritan? Or are you after, you know, something else? Huh. Uh, do we be honest with her? <laughs> you're funny. Hey, at least you're upfront about it. Okay, I guess I'll let you help me. Be warned, you might regret what you've gotten yourself into. No worries. What are you looking for anyway? Did you lose a bracelet or something? Not exactly. I'm searching for one of the seven mysteries. Supposedly, this location of the Whispering Canal. The what? Now I've done it. I bet you think I'm some kind of uh, lunatic. The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Do you know anything about it? I know it's the title of this game. I figured everyone around here would have at least heard of it, but I guess not. Hanjo is the uh, Hanjo is what the southern part of Sumida is called. A long time ago, this part of Tokyo was split into two separate cities. The north part was Mukojima, and the south 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 part was Hanjo. Huh? Uh, am I bothered? Oh my God! Ah, am I boring you? Well, I'm not a local or anything. I just work around here. Oh, then no wonder you didn't know. Well, the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo is a legend dating all the way back to the Edo period. Really? It's that old? That's like over 200 years ago. Oh, I've got your attention after all. I just assumed it was one of those fake stories made up to chase the occult craze. <laughs> I don't blame you. A lot of the popular stories going around are pretty fishy. But the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo are different because they're all true. They're true? That's what I said. They're the real deal. So hold on. 
What does that mean? Are you telling me there's actually paranormal stuff at work in this park? Yep, pretty much. But there's got to be more to it. After all I've done, I still haven't found a thing. That was the first time I met Yoko Fukunaga. Hanjo became known as a hotspot for strange happenings during the Edo period. A number of these stories have survived to this day and become known as the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Uh, while many of these were likely the result of people blaming things they didn't understand on spirits or monsters, the stories continue to be told as urban legends. Uh, despite what the name would imply, there are actually more than ten of these strange tales. The roots will likely come from the stories told by the city's common folk. The most famous of the stories is the Whispering Canal, which eventually became the basis for both an idiom and a well-known uh, Rakugo story. Uh, the Whispering Canal, the Fool's Procession, the Beckoning Light, the Haunting Clappers, the Evergreen Beach, uh, the Taiko of Suguru, uh, the Foot Washing Mansion, the One Sided Reed, the Ever Burning Lantern, the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo, Kuniteru, uh, Utagawa Painting. Enduring superstition, formerly known as Kinshiburi, many fishermen once gathered on this section of the canal that ran through Hanjo. As their days came to a close and the fishermen gathered up their catches, a terrifying voice would rise up from the canal, whispering, Leave it behind. Leave it behind. Those who ignored the voice found themselves unable to move and their previously full baskets of fish emptied. They would then be dragged into the canal, never to return. This strange phenomenon continued to occur and the people began to call this body of water the Whispering Canal. Paranormal phenomena, the supernatural, aliens, cryptids, lost civilizations, ESP, the list goes on. Such unexplainable phenomena are quick to take on a life of their own. A plesiosaur named Nessie living in Loch Ness, sightings of mythological creatures like the Suchi, uh, Suchinoko or Hibagon. The urban legend of the Kuchisake Ona, television reports of spoon-bending psychics, documentaries which feature mediums and spirit photography. These are only a few examples of the stories that I have captivated that have captivated the public. There's no end to this obsession in sight, with magazines or on paranormal phenomena enjoying widespread publication. Most recently, rumors of an ancient ritual known as the Rite of Resurrection have been spreading in certain circles. All right. We exchanged contact information. We've talked on the phone a few times since. We've even met in person once or twice. But she never brought up the seven mysteries of Hanjo again. I figured she'd gotten bored of it. Until today, when all of a sudden she decided to resume her search. Huh? Wait a second. Where did Yoko go? According to Yoko... The Whispering Canal, one of the seven mysteries of Hanjo, is around here somewhere. It's apparently the story the expression left at the canal originally comes from. I think I left myself a note about it. I should check my files. Uh, I think I've already read that. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be anything else there. Uh, there's Yoko. Anything else? There she is. She's back to digging up holes in the sandbox and searching around the playground. She seems to be enjoying herself, talking to the animal figures and petting them on their heads. No animal needs that much petting. Gee, she's still at it. That's right, she asked me to come here to help her look for one of the Seven Mysteries. Actually, I think I did some research into the Seven Mysteries of Honjo. I can't remember all too well. I should check my files. Uh, the Fool's Possession, a mysterious tale regaling an encounter had by a daimyo at his residence in Honjo's Ushijima, now Kama Komagata High School. When walking around his estate, he heard the sound of music, much like that of a Kagura performance. He commanded his people to find the source, but no matter how much they searched, the music would fade when one neared the wa where Wari Gesui Canal, the source of the sound was never located. The story is also known as the procession of the Tanuki, as many were of the belief that it must have been these mischievous tricksters behind it all. 
While walking along the road near Honji at night, one might spot a hazy lantern light up ahead, despite there being no one around. Following it will cause it to go out suddenly when getting near, but just when one fears the darkness might swallow them up, another light will appear further ahead, as if guiding the one who sees it. Some say the flame is benevolent, leading people to their homes, while others believe it is a monster leading people astray. Some even believe it's the vengeful spirit of someone that died, luring the lost to the land of the dead. Uh, as the evening bell rings in Iri Echo, near present day Shumoch Shumoku Bridge, a night watchman patrols the dark streets and announces his presence by shouting warnings about fires, all the while all the while striking his wooden clappers. But tonight the sound of another set of clappers answers back. He curiously claps his clappers together again. Clack clack. The echo answers again again. Clack clack. Uh, but no matter how hard he searches for the source of his second pair of clappers, he never finds it. Some say it was the work of a mischievous Tanuki or Kitsune, while others say it was a warning from a spirit of someone who lost their life in a terrible fire. Is this whole, like, Mysteries of Hanjo thing going to be Tanukis? Uh, once upon a time, in North Okurabashi, a beautiful beech tree stood in the garden of Lord Shinden's residence, now known as the former Yasuda Gardens. Uh, it was so impressive that the house became known among people as the beach residence. Somehow, no one had ever seen a single leaf fall from the tree. As rumors spread of the eternally green tree, it became known as the evergreen beach. However, this particular species of tree was actually an evergreen, so the lack of fallen leaves was nothing out of the ordinary. This has led people to say that the strangest part of this legend is the fact that it even became a legend at all. Uh, kind of reminds me, um, did you guys watch the Monument Mythos? Uh... One of the stories is of these um, these trees that uh, they're difficult to cut down. They make a noise and they bend over at certain points. Um, and one of the storylines is that the children get near the trees and then they find themselves like in an alternate reality where things are just slightly different. Uh, there once was a daimyo from the Hirosaki domain in Suguru who built a residence in Midi, Midi, Mido, Mido Richo on a large piece of land. On this estate was an almost eight meter tall tower that serves as a lookout for fires. Only a designated firefighter was allowed to use the large drum that resided to stop the tower in the event of a fire. While most towers used wooden blocks to sound the fire alarm, for some reason this residence was permitted to use drums. The residence and its special privileges led to much speculation and gossip among the townsfolk doesn't seem like a mystery. Uh, this is the story of something that occurred in the dead of the night in a residence in uh, Mikasachu, Sacho, modern day south uh, Wiragasui Street in Kam Kamezawa. A foul smelling wind rattled the house. Suddenly, a giant foot drenched in blood smashed through the ceiling. Wash, it commanded. Uh, after the servants carefully washed the foot, it returned from whence it came, fixing the roof it had broken. A man who had been visited by the foot every night asked a friend to trade houses with him. That night, the foot stopped appearing. Okay. There once was an infamous rogue by the name of Tomezo, who fell for a woman named Okoma. Tomezo persistently chased after Okoma, attempting to win her heart over and over again, but she rejected his advances each time. Enraged by her indifference to him, Tomezo brought a dagger to a canal near Ryogoku Bridge and attacked Okoma. He cut the arm and leg off one side of her body, then threw them into the canal. Ever since then, the reeds growing along the canal have only sprouted leaves on one side. On a bone-chilling winter's night, one may happen upon a soba cart along the canal known as South Wiragasui, but there is something strange about this cart. No matter when one might visit, its owner is nowhere to be found, yet the lantern that hangs from it stays perpetually lit, burning brightly even with no oil to fuel it. Should one attempt to put out the flame, it immediately roars back to life. However, there is also the tale of the never-burning lantern, another telling of the story in which the soba cart's lantern always remains dark, refusing to be lit. So there's no Okay, I see it's 
So there's one. But 12. No, 21. 21 is a mystery as well that we haven't unlocked yet. Oh wait, she's coming back this way. Hey, what was that just now? Huh? Didn't you hear that? No, I didn't hear anything. You sure you didn't just imagine it? Hmm, maybe I did. But your special talent, you should have been able to hear it. Pay closer attention for me, okay? My special talent, what are you talking about? Huh? I mean your spirit sense. You look like you can handle your liquor. Huh? I have no idea what drinking has to do with it, but I don't think so. Is she just making a pun about li uh, liquor being spirits? Hmm? Well, you must. I mean, you can see me, right? Huh? Shogo Okie, 1 a.m. Kinshi Bori Park. I don't know how she's so comfortable talking about spirits and the paranormal at this time of night. Either she's got guts or she's just used to it. Unless... No, it can't be. Are you a ghost? It's gotten really late. Really late, actually. It's already past 1am. There's a chill in the air, but I guess that's normal for this time of year. Or so I keep telling myself. There's an interesting looking playground. I bet it's crawling with kids during the daytime, but it's kind of peaceful here at night. Eh. These telephone booths are all over town. Lights are always on so they can be used in an emergency. We've already been over all this. Wait, wait, wait. You're kidding, right? About what? I mean, just now. It kind of sounded like you were saying that only people with spirit sense can see you. Of course, that was a joke. Duh. You don't really think I'm some kind of evil spirit, do you? But yeah. I meant what I said about your spirit sense being strong. I bet you could down a whole gimlet in one gulp. Seriously. That's the real reason I asked you to help me with the seven mysteries of Hanjo business. Okay, let me just clarify something. Are you saying you can actually see paranormal stuff? Sure. I could handle a solid Moscow meal. Why are you measuring this in terms of cocktails? Not a believer, huh? Well, that's no matter. But you have to have seen some weird stuff over the years, right? Weird stuff? Yeah, like things you could see but could never understand. You can't be serious. I've seen ghost photos in magazines before, but are you telling me they really exist? You bet they do, but you can only recognize them if you really believe in them, so be careful. So even with my skill, I won't be able to see them if I doubt that they exist. That's right. The spirit world is all about the mind and the soul. You won't be able to see a thing unless you're properly in tune. But sometimes people get caught up in the moment, thinking they might see something, and then they really do because they believe they would. Is that how that works? Yep. And just like drinking. You'll never know how much booze you can handle unless you're ready to drown some so down some shots. I'm still not sure I get the drinking thing. Haha, <laughs> you know, I realized how strange it was as the words left my mouth. Sheesh. Uh, should we recall first or should we keep talking to her? I've gotten most of my memory back, but I still feel a bit out of it. I guess let's keep talking to her. Totally unrelated, but do you actually drink? Real alcohol, I mean. Whoa, talk about whiplash. I didn't expect you to start making small talk. Well, our conversation was getting a bit dark. I figured a change of topic might lighten things up. Oh, I see. If you only want to know, I like to think I can handle a few drinks. But to tell you the truth, I've never actually had a Moscow Mule. Really? Now? <laughs> I just thought it sounded cool. 
I would like to try it, though. Why don't we go for a drink sometime, then? Ooh, are you asking me out? Ah, so you were after something else. No, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I'd be up for that. But only if we find one of the seven mysteries. All right, then let's get to work. I just remembered, I actually did some research on the seven mysteries of Honjo at the library. You did? What did you find? Well, I discovered a few interesting things. Oh, tell me everything. Although they're called the seven mysteries, the literature lists nine of them. Ooh, I'm surprised you pick up on that. Nice researching. Some people think there could be up to 15. That's the thing about these old folk tales. Stuff gets added to them over the years. That's more extra stories than main ones. Yeah, but the seven mysteries rolls off the tongue way better than the nine or the 15. If you say so. But it makes sense, don't you think? It's more likely to be passed on if it's easy to remember. That's a good point. What about the seven mysteries of Hanjo caught your attention? So I read some of these stories and none of them were, well, scary. I thought these were supposed to be ghost stories. That's true. They're more like a collection of superstitions, really. But there are some pretty disturbing ones in the mix. Yeah, like the one that's supposed to take place here, the Whispering Canal. People who fish in this canal would hear a voice call out saying, leave it. They had to abandon their catch or the canal would take it. Right, right. Is that what you're expecting to find here in this park? Uh, not quite. We're talking about a folktale from hundreds of years ago. After centuries of telephone game, after centuries of the telephone game, who knows if it's anything like the original story? So basically, you think the true story of the Whispering Canal might be completely different from what we know. Exactly. I'm sure it is. I mean, weren't you curious? About what? People from around here have the expression left at the canal, right? Meaning to abandon someone. The story is where it comes from. Except the story being told today is about fish. There's nothing in it about leaving people behind. You're gonna leave us behind, aren't you, Yoko? Uh, now that you mention it, that's true. So you're saying the original story maybe did involve someone being abandoned. That's what I'm trying to find out. Ah, gotcha. And if you can believe that, there might be a hope for you yet. You can't be serious. Oh, by the way, we were talking about the rite of resurrection. Ooh, your memory is as strong as your tolerance. I'm going to start calling you Martini Man Shogo. I'm really climbing up the drinks menu, huh? So you know about it, huh? The rite of resurrection? A magazine ran a feature on it recently that got practically everyone talking about it. Really? Maybe that's where I heard about it. Still, I don't know. It seems a little too far-fetched to be true. So the rite of resurrection. It's the forbidden art of bringing the dead back to life, concocted by a famous Onmyoji from the ancient age. Rumor has it, an old manuscript containing actual concrete details about the rite was recently discovered. This rumor comes from a presentation given by local historian Hideki Ariyashi at an academic conference. You sure know a lot about this stuff. That's because I'm secretly a huge occult buff. Uh, I kind of got that. Oh. But if a researcher spoke about it as an at an academic con but if a researcher spoke about it at an academic conference, it must have been it must have some basis in fact. Exactly. That's why I believe the right of resurrection is real. Now I'm starting to believe it too. Good. The pursuit of the unknown starts with belief. I got that from Professor Ariyashi himself. Era Ishi. Era Ishi. Hmm. As indicated by its name, this manuscript holds detailed instructions on how to perform the secret art of reviving the dead. This forbidden ritual is said to have been devised by a once famous Onmyoji. Local researcher Hideki Araishi recently discovered the old manuscript and gave a presentation on it at an academic conference, sending ripples through the field of occult studies. Wait, hang on, I've got another question. Hmm. You mentioned the Rite of Resurrection. Are you looking for that too? Does it have something to do with the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo? Ooh, you're sharp. I could cut my finger on you. To tell the truth. It's actually the other way around. <clears throat> what do you mean? Hmm, well, I started off searching for the Rite of Resurrection, but along the way I realized that I needed to investigate the sudden mysteries of Hanjo first. I see. So then... 
why are you looking for the right? If you're looking into a way to bring someone back from the dead, does that mean you've got someone you want to bring back? You know what? Forget it. It just came to mind, so I thought I'd ask. I didn't mean to pry. Sorry. No, it's fine. I figured I need to tell you at some point. It's Ogopogo. The puppy? Ogopogo? Yeah, I want to bring Ogopogo back to life. He died in an accident about a month ago. Ogopogo died? All right. Ogopogo is my dog. I had him for eight years. Ah, okay. Your dog. Gotcha. You spent a long time together. Losing him must have been really hard for you. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not sure if the right even works on dogs. But as soon as I found out about it, I knew I had to give it a try. I don't think I could forgive myself if I just let the opportunity pass by. Definitely. Now I understand why you feel so strongly about it. Thanks for telling me. I know this must be hard to talk about. Hmm, but you know what? All that led me to beating you. So at least something good came of it. Though that doesn't mean I'll stop looking, obviously. Yoko. I'll do everything I can to help you. Yay! I'm so glad to hear that. Let's keep up the hard work then, yeah? We're going to die. Uh, what's that got to do with the Seven Mysteries? So, about the connection between this rite and the Seven Mysteries, putting together, together everything we talked about, my guess is that the original stories behind the Seven Mysteries, the true stories, are the key to finding the Rite of Resurrection. And that's why you're here searching for one of them. Do I have that right? Wow! 10 out of 10. You're proving to be quite the capable assistant. Wait, since when was I, was I your assistant? Anyway, this is all just hearsay, but... Some say that what led to the Seven Mysteries coming to be was the Rite of Resurrection itself. Huh? Don't the stories come from the Edo period? I thought that the Rite of Resurrection was supposed to be way older than that. Right. It seems that Nan Miyoji from the Edo period re rediscovered the ancient art. That old manuscript I mentioned with all the details on how to use the Rite. Apparently it was written in the Edo period. Oh right, I never told you its name. The manuscript is called The Record of Fates. Whoa. What a name. And it speculates that the secret of the rite is hidden within the seven mysteries of Hanjo. So now the seven mysteries of, are the hot new trends. Among who? You know, this whole thing is starting to sound pretty questionable. Come on. Remember what I said about the pursuit of the unknown? It starts with belief. Right. Hello. Uh, uh, the Record of Fates, an old manuscript from the Edo period written by the sorcerer who recovered the Rite of Resurrection, is viewed as a priceless and authentic document due to its detailed account on how to perform the ritual. Rite of Resurrection, Record of Fates. We've still got three there and two there. What the hell? Feels like the air just changed. What was that just now? I feel eyes on the back, on my back. I can't move. Is there something behind me? Yoko, are you okay? Ah, ah, ah. Hey, what's wrong? Stay with me. No, this, this can't be. No, no. Ah. Ah. Why? Eh. Eh. Yoko. Yoko. Uh, I don't... I don't see anything, Yoko. Something's got Yoko really rattled. Am I supposed to see something? <sighs> 
Yoko is pointing over here, but I don't see anything out of the ordinary. Still, she looks really spooked. I doubt she's making this up. Damn it, did I miss it? There has to be something strange around here. I should keep looking around. I don't see anything I should be frightened of. Ugh, I don't get this. What's going on? Did something happen? Yoko? Uh... That doesn't seem good. Huh? Huh? What the... What is... Something's... What is it? Why is this happening? Shogo Okie. 1 a.m. Kinshibori Park. Yoko, answer me. Yoko! No way. It can't be. Why? Why? Ugh! What the hell just happened? No, damn it, I've got bigger problems. Yoko, just hold on, everything's gonna be okay. Oh god, she's not breathing. She's cold and I don't feel a pulse. This can't be happening. Okay, okay, okay. An ambulance, right. You gotta call an ambulance, I need a phone. Right, the phone. I've gotta call an ambulance. I called Nin. The ambulance shouldn't be long. But is it going to make a difference? Her body's gone stiff and her skin is cold and I don't think she's breathing. She looks more like a mannequin than a person now. I don't think there's any coming back from that. I don't get it. Just a few minutes ago, we were chatting away without a care in the world. Yoko. How did this happen? How could someone so bright and bubbly just suddenly drop dead? Resurrect her. Huh? Oh, that's right. If that right of resurrection she was talking about really does exist, there might be a way to bring her back. If someone can just drop dead out of nowhere, like, like they were cursed, then why shouldn't there be a way to bring them back to life? Yoko believed in it, so if I believe in her, it seems completely possible. Maybe, just maybe, I can still save her. Even if I've got to deal with spirit senses and curses and whatever, I've got to try. Wait for me, Yoko, I promise. I'll use the right of resurrection to bring you back. Right before she died, I felt a strange presence a few times. And it seemed like she saw something, something that shook her to the bone. There's definitely something strange going on, and maybe it's still here. What could she have seen? She mentioned that the right of resurrection and seven mysteries were connected. So maybe, whatever it was she saw, had something to do with the Whispering Canal. Whoa. Damn it, that presence again. It must be around here somewhere, but where? Cold night air feels like it's pressing down on me. Just standing out here makes me want to scream, but I've got bigger problems right now. I've called an ambulance already. It should be here soon. Not the playground. It was over here, wasn't it? There's something here, I know it. I just need to look harder. Although, if some innocent poking around uh, about the seven mysteries was enough... Uh, yeah. Although, if some innocent poking around about the seven mysteries was enough to get Yoko killed, there's a good chance of the same thing happening to me. But I already knew that when I decided to get involved. Huh? There's something on the ground. Did Yoko drop this? I didn't notice it till now, but there's a small wooden sculpture by her side. 
It's three or four centimeters tall. It looks like it could be a keychain, but from how rotted it is, there's no, uh, it's way too old for that. Despite how tiny it is, I feel an almost palpable malice radiating from it. What the hell is this thing? Cursed stone acquired. The Whispering Canal. Oh, what the? Are these the Whispering Canal's memories? Why? Help me. Leave me. It hurts. Drop dead. Gah! Such deep sorrow. A resentful memory is flowing into my mind. My, uh, they turn their backs. They walk away. They leave me behind. Drop dead. Kill them. Kill them. Those who walk away. Kill them all. You have acquired the power of the curse stone, the Whispering Canal. You can use it to kill those who walk away from you. Press the use curse button to kill your target as they attempt to depart. Ugh! A murderous impulse seeps into my soul like thick black tar. Now, kill. Can you hear it, curse bearer? You who so strongly desire the right. Kill them. Should you seek life's restoration, take your curse in hand. Reap lives by the score and claim their soul dregs for your own. Collect enough to sate this vessel and by their sacrifice claim the gift of resurrection. Or better yet, slay your fellow curse bearers. For theirs are the equal of droves of lesser souls. Now, go forth and kill. Uh, curse power kills by drowning one who leaves the curse bearer behind. Resentful memory. Toko loved fishing with her father, uh, Jinkichi, more than anything. With their wicker baskets on their backs, they would leave for the canal every morning and fish till the evening. The miso soup her mother Koma made using the carp they caught was to die for. Her parents loved her dearly. One day, however, her father disappeared. Toki's mother went to look for him and never came back either. Those who came to express their concern eventually stopped visiting her out of fear. Toki continued to wait all alone. Mother, father, where did you go? Don't leave me behind. Unable to bear the loneliness, she left her home and trudged along the roads until nightfall. Neither her mother nor father were anywhere to be found. Tears stung her eyes. Suddenly, the sound of fish splashing in the water cut through the silence. She found herself standing before the canal where they used to fish together. The taste of carp and the memory of her father's smile flashed across her mind. Without thinking, Toki walked into the moat. The sound of water splashing echoed throughout the night air. Passers-by thought of it only as the fish in the canal. The splashing faded and silence returned. Uh, to the lovely night. Curse echoes are the visual manifestations of curses. These manifestations are fundamentally related to the origin of the curse. They do not always take the same shape and may sometimes appear in a more abstract or disfigured form. They lack consciousness, unlike a spirit, and are thus the mere dregs of a soul. Curses are made tangible by what are known as soul dregs. Someone possessed by a curse that has a curse echo is called a curse bearer. Curse Echo is in itself a curse, and a possessed curse bearer can inflict that curse upon others at will. A curse that comes with a curse echo is considered very powerful in and of itself. Ordinarily, those with no spirit sense would not be able to perceive a curse echo, but anyone who becomes a curse bearer can see other curse echoes. Uh, curse stones, old Netsuki carvings imbued with curses derived from the seven mysteries of Hanjo. Ordinarily, only those with spirit sense can wield such curses, but these curse stones allow ordinary people to use them just as lethally. When someone dies, their life essence leaves the body and becomes a soul. If one is killed by means of certain curses, however, their life essence will turn into a residue known as soul dregs. The rite of resurrection essentially uses these soul dregs as a sacrificed offering to bring back the dead. But the amount of soul dregs required depends on when the person being resurrected passed away. The more time has passed uh, since their passing, the more soul dregs are required. What the hell was that? It was like the curse's memories flowed directly into my mind. In an instant, I understood everything. 
When I picked up this when I picked up this curse stone, the whispering canal must have cursed me. I also heard a strange voice. It told me that if I want the right, I have to kill a bunch of people with this curse stone and collect their souls. I guess it's good to know that the right really exists, but this thing wants me to kill people to get it? Screw that. Putting my own life on the line is one thing. Murdering other people is another thing entirely. And not just one person either. Scores, it said. So, this is the curse of the Whispering Canal, huh? Curse that traps the soul of anyone who tries to walk away from me. But, if I use it and collect enough souls, then I'll be able to bring Yoko back. There was something about other curse bearers being worth more soul dregs. Jeez. I'm really at a loss here. Uh, so, recommendation, uh, put the file updates after that part. Oh, of course. I don't know how it took me so long to realize. This has to be some weird prank she's playing. Any second now, she's going to open her eyes, get up, and have a good laugh at how scared I was. Right, Yoko? You can give it up now. Boy, did I fall for that one. You really got me good. Wait, no, I've got it. You really were some sort of spirit all along. There's no way you're really dead, right? I'm not even fooling myself anymore. There's no going back. Only forward. Feels like I'm being watched. Is someone there? Where are you? Now that I look closer, is there someone there? Hey, who's there? Oh my, how unexpected. It was your curse that killed that poor woman, I take it. What? Cat got your tongue, Mr. Okie? Huh? A tall, humorless looking man. He doesn't look familiar to me. He's acting like he knows me, though. Have we met somewhere before? Who are you? And how do you know my name? Do you mean to say you don't recognize me? This comes as a bit of a shock, I must say. Look a little harder, and I dare say it will jog your memory. What's with this guy? That man, who is he? He looks to be in his 30s or 40s. He's all dressed up in a suit and tie, but somehow he looks real shady. What's he doing here? Was he watching us all this time? Something tells me curses are nothing new to him. If he's one of the other curse bearers, then I need to be careful. He might be here to kill me and take my curse down. But by the same token, killing him will net me a lot of soul dregs. I still don't have a clue who you are. How do you know me? Have we met? Dear me, it is always humbling to find that one is not as well known as one believes. Perhaps my name will help you remember. I am Takumi Yumioka. Takumi Yumioka? Does that ring any bells? I think I've heard that name somewhere before, maybe. So you do not even know my name. How disappointing. Disappointing, but fortuitous. The man who was covertly watching Shogo Okie at the Kinshibori Park. Well then, Mr. Okie, allow me to make you a proposition. You have a curse stone in your possession. I would like you to give it to me. I can't. I need to bring Yoko back to life. Oh, my. So you mean to use it, then? You know about the seven mysteries of Hanjo and their curses and all that, don't you? But of course... Those cursed stones, they are terribly dangerous things capable of killing without a trace, so long as their conditions are met. I hadn't thought of it that way, but yeah. Imagine what might happen if one fell into the wrong hands. They would be safer in mind, don't you agree? Although it seems I arrived too late to stop you from killing that poor woman. What are you? That wasn't me. I am willing to overlook your indiscretion, but only if you give me your curse stone. No way in hell. For all I know, the wrong hands are yours. Very well. 
I had hoped to settle this amicably, but you leave me no choice. This Takumi guy must have a curse stone of his own. At least, it'd be safer to assume so. It would explain how he knows so damn much. So, he can kill me instantly, as long as he fulfills his stone's conditions. Until I know what those conditions are, I can't make any sudden moves. I have to keep him talking, learn what I can, and figure out a way to get my curse out first. How can I get him to leave me behind? Though, it would be a waste not to take this chance to find out about the other curse bearers. I need a topic that'll keep him talking. My best bet would be... What do you want with my curse stone, anyway? I intend to seal it away in a secure location so it may never be used again. I am certain that you too would rather be free of this burden. The power to kill without fear of consequence is, in itself, a curse. There are many never do wells in this world who could not resist the urge to use it. All the more so if promised the chance to resurrect the dead. You'll seal it away, huh? How? I'll put it in the care of a sorcerer who is well versed in supernatural matters. If I have gained your trust, I must ask you to hand me your curse stone. How do I know it wasn't you who killed Yoko with your curse? Mr. Oke, if you're hoping to trick me into revealing whether I possess a curse stone, I assure you, you cannot. It is your curse that was responsible, Mr. Oke, no matter what you might tell yourself. That doesn't make sense. I only found this after Yoko died. Oh. Don't play dumb. I know you're the one who did this. Whether you choose to believe me is your prerogative, but you are mistaken. But you should know that multiple curses have awakened at once at the stroke of midnight. There are many other curses in Hanjo and many other curse bearers. It is not premature. Is it not premature of you to assume that I am the one responsible? Wait. So you're saying that at midnight, a bunch of people became curse bearers. There's no point in continuing this conversation. For all I know, he could be telling me anything. Why are you so convinced it was my curse that killed Yoko? Why? It is simply that... Hmm. Huh. I do believe I just saw your companion move. She what? What are you doing? Should you not check on her? Before I give you my curse stone, I want to know who you are. I need to know if I can trust you. A reasonable enough concern. Very well. I am an associate of the great sorcerer Su uh, Suigen Gam Gamioto. Suigen Gamioto? Suigen Gamioto. Indeed, you must have heard of him. I believe he was recently featured in a certain magazine. Your unfortunate companion there came seeking his counsel not a few days ago. It was from her that I learned your name. I thought she would have mentioned me to you, but it seems that was presumptuous of me. And when did this happen? Why, just two or three days ago. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not buying that. He knows I don't know who he is, so he's just trying to feed me a story. I've only known Yoko for a month, but she never mentioned going to see some mystic. Although it is Yoko we're talking about here, so it's hard to say for sure. I hope that is enough con to convince you that my hands are more than trustworthy. For each of the seven mysteries, there's a curse and a curse bearer, right? Do you know who any of the others are? And what would you do with that information? Your intentions are nothing untoward, I hope. It is in the hearts of the selfish and insipid, of those who would be the most tempted by the rite of resurrection, that the curses take root. And a curse's resentful memories impart a powerful urge to kill, as I am certain you are aware. You are a victim of circumstance, Mr. Okie, but your situation is exceedingly dangerous. You must relinquish your curse stone for your own benefit, before it is too late. Too late? It's already too late. There's no going back. All I can do is keep pressing forward. If you're going to stand in my way, then I'll have to stop you. Might I take that as a threat, Mr. Okie? I would encourage you to exercise more discretion before you fall foul of a curse. If I want to use my curse on him, I have to get him to walk away and leave me behind. What would convince him to do that? Scenario 1, he does what he came here to do. Scenario 2, he suddenly needs to be somewhere else. 
He's probably here for my curse stone, so I don't think I'd get out of, of scenario one alive. Scenario two means hoping something will happen by chance. And luck is rarely on my side. So my only hope is scenario three. Something makes it impossible for him to stay. I don't have to keep him away forever. I just need to get him to walk away once. Takumi Yumi Yumioka, he said his name was. He hasn't taken his eyes off me for a second. Even now, he's still staring right at me. Who the hell is he? Maybe if I focus, I can recall something useful. Takumi Yumioka, how the hell does he know me? It's not like I've been getting out much. I barely have a life outside of work. Wait, that's it. My work, that's how he knows me. I've never actually met him, so it totally slipped my mind. Takumi is the secretary to the chairwoman of Hihaku Soaps, a chemical company headquartered in Sumida City. Takumi worships the company chairwoman, Natsue Yamamori, and demonstrates his unwavering loyalty through his swift and exact execution of every task given to him, just as Natsue Yamamori continues to exert her tremendous influence over the company since her retirement from the presidency, so too does Takumi continue to support her behind the scenes, acting as Natsue's mouthpiece in this in this capacity has earned him the ire of the current president and the board of directors. Takumi knows the names and faces of not only all employees at the head office, but also the temporary workers in the factories and warehouses, and even their main supporters. Suigen got me out of my ass. This guy thinks he can sell me anything. But I don't know if having figured that out helps me much right now. Suigen got me out of my ass. I know who you are. You work at Hihaku Soaps, just like me. You're the chairwoman's secretary. Well, that took you long enough. Your lack of company loyalty is frankly astounding. Allow me to reiterate my request then, not as a stranger, but as your superior. We're not, not at the office. You don't get to push me around like that. Why is our chairwoman's secretary even out looking for curse stones anyway? I refrain from revealing myself precisely to avoid such questions, but I suppose needs must. Since the dawn of the Showa era, the land of Hanjo has nurtured our company's growth and vice versa. It is our duty to ensure that curses do not take root in this land we know as our home. I am not sure I buy that. Like many things, it is not a matter that concerns the rank and file. The chairwoman has no desire to spread fear through our beloved company's birthplace. Now, if that is all, I must insist that you hand me your curse stones. Uh, he's way above us lowly peons. He on, I've only ever seen him in the company bulletins, but he knew who I was. Could he have memorized the names and faces of everyone in the company? Uh, I don't know how I'm supposed to get out of this without uh, turning around. Wait, I've got it. I know how I convinced him to leave. Oh, crap. I totally forgot. What is it? I called an ambulance. Oh, right. I forgot to mention I called an ambulance. It should be coming any minute now. Ah, an ambulance? Have you lost your mind? They will arrive to find you standing next to a corpse alone in the dead of night. No doubt they will hand you over to the police who will have some questions for you. Probably, but I'm sticking with Yoko. Unless you want to join me in an interrogation room, you'd better get out of here. You're telling the truth, I see. They're getting closer by the second. I cannot afford to be waylaid at this juncture. I fear I must take my, my leave. Sooner or later, I will return for your curse stone. I only hope you do not abuse it in the meantime. Should we kill him? It seems like we get the option to not kill him. Well then, I bid you good evening. Ugh! Shogo Okie, you dare! Ugh! Ugh! <coughs> so I didn't do that. He's dead. He's really dead. So this is what a curse stone can do. <clears throat> Whoa. 
Cursed Stone of the Whispering Canal has gained 1% soul tricks. So I didn't do that. I didn't press the button. Shogo Okie, 2 a.m. Kinsh uh, Kinshicho area. I'm going to go get water real quick. Uh, so yeah, I I didn't push the button. Uh, Sh uh, Shogo decided to do that by himself. Apparently he can do that. I felt bad for leaving Yoko, but I couldn't stay there. The emergency medical services will probably take care of her body. Takumi's too. This will be all over the news tomorrow. But until then, at least I know she'll be in a safe place. All right. I have to find my next sacrifice quickly. Got no time to waste. I need to find the other curse bearers and collect their souls. Killing Takumi barely got me any soul dregs. Guess he mustn't have been a curse bearer after all. It's not enough. The soul of a non curse bearer amounts to little more than leftover breadcrumbs. I have to think of places where the other curse bearers of the Seven Mysteries would be. The curses were activated at around midnight. The others are bound to be active still. I should check to see if there are any other places with connections to the, mysteri uh, with the mysteries nearby. At the very least, another curse bearer might be thinking the same as me, meaning I could run into them. Let's see, which of the sudden mysteries are closest? I'm in the Kinshicho area right now. The haunting clappers on, are on the other side of the Oyoko River, just over the Shum Shumoku Bridge. The foot-washing mansion and the ever-burning lantern are around the South Warigasui Street, past the train tracks. And further along the uh, Oyoko River, I'll find the beckoning light at the Honjo Bridge. Honji Bridge. Uh, these three places are the closest. I guess I should start there. I'll collect the other curse bearer's souls before dawn and bring Yoko back to life. I should go to another location connected to the uh, Seven Mysteries of Honjo. All I have is the Cursed Stone. Cursed Stone of the Whispering Canal, one of the Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. It is currently 1% filled with soul dregs. Shimoku Bridge Area. The Shimoku Bridge is supposedly where the bell uh, from the Haunting Clapper story used to be. I wandered around here for a while, but I didn't see anything interesting. The only thing I found was what looks like a 100 yen lighter someone threw away. I don't know if curses are vulnerable to fire, but maybe I'll find a use for it. 100 yen lighter acquired. Of course, I didn't just find a lighter. There were a ton of cigarette butts strewn across the ground too. Seems like the place is well in need of some wooden clappers to warn us about fire. South Waragasui Street. Both the foot washing mansion and the ever burning lantern are from this area. This late at night, even a road as big as this one is silent as the grave. Is it just me or is it oddly dark around here? Could this be. Could this be. Is this darkness the work of a curse? Have I already fulfilled its conditions to kill? Should I get out of here? Or should I stick around and figure out just what I'm dealing with? I want to go back here and see if there's anything to see real quick. Doesn't seem like there is. Doesn't seem like I'll make any more progress investigating the haunting clappers. Yeah. Let's move up here. Punji Bridge. I'm here at the Honji Bridge, a location linked with the beckoning light. Someone's standing on the bridge, silhouetting themselves against the sky. Wait, wait, wait! Fine, I'll go first. Whoa! Hmm, I see, I see. Interesting. Well, now, this is a surprise. Eh? Who are you? If you got the wrong guy, just say so. Along with one super shady looking guy, 
Only a curse bearer would have any reason to be here around this time. Maybe I should talk to him. Come now, it won't hurt to at least tell me your name. What are you doing here? Very good. You shouldn't give up your name so easily, especially not to strangers. Gone is the age when might made right. Nowadays, it's information that rules the world. You do well to remember that. You're the one who asked. Your name, your address, your phone number, your age, your occupation, your personal information is much more valuable than you might think. You should treat those things with care. So I guess you don't plan on telling me anything either, then. You can call me Richter Kai, private detective. But didn't you say to... Never mind. You say you're a detective? That's correct. I am a man who deals in secrets. Don't expect me to share any more information with you, though. I only told you so... Uh, I only to told you so that we could have an understanding. Private Detective Richter Kai. Uh, the eccentric man that Shogo Okie ran into on Honji Bridge. Hardly anyone's around, not surprising, seeing as it's past two in the morning. Feels like the whole world's gone to sleep. The other side is an industrial district, and further down from the bridge is the temple from which it gets its name. Honji Bridge has a pretty unusual structure. The ends are stone, but the middle is steel. The o Oyoki... The Oyoko River beneath it is actually a canal that was dug during the Edo period. He's a flamboyant fellow. I wouldn't bat an eyelid if this were the inner city, but he stands out like a sore thumb in these parts. Uh, what's a detective doing around here? Working. And that's all I'll say about that. I could ask you the same thing, though. This seems like a strange place to stop. What brought you here? I saw a strange man lurking around. I see. Then let me ask a different question. Why did you go out of your way to strike up a conversation with that strange man? I'm looking for someone. I figured it was worth seeing if you knew anything. You don't say... In that case, I just might be able to help you. Can you describe the person you're looking for? I know I said a person, but I'm actually looking for something called the beckoning light. The beckoning light? Uh-huh. The seven mysteries of Hanjo. That's right. A friend of mine was really into that kind of stuff. She said the beckoning light appears here in the middle of the night. I wanted to see for myself. <laughs> really, you're the adventurous type, aren't you? Unfortunately, I think you're out of luck. I've been here for a while, but I haven't seen any strange lights. All right. Well, thanks for telling me. But just wait one second. There's still some time left for it to appear. Why don't we wait together? Thanks, but I think I'm good. Really? Well, I'm sorry I couldn't be of any more help. Ah, oh, that's right, I meant to ask. Do you have a light on you? Light? You mean for cigarettes? Well, I've got this cheap one I picked up, but that's it. Oh no, this will do nicely. Are you sure? Cheap lighter I found lying around. It barely has any fluid, uh, lighter fluid left. Anyway, I should get back to work. Once you're gone, of course. Is there a reason I can't be here? Of course, my work is top secret. All right, we've exhausted all. Doesn't seem like he has anything to do with the curse bearers. I should move on. If he's been here for as long as he says, there's a good chance he's seen something. But I don't think it's worth asking. He seems like all kinds of trouble. South Wari Gasui, Gasui Street. I knew it. I can feel strange presence in the air. I 
I know it's past midnight, but it still seems oddly dark around here. And this feeling, it's the same as from before. There, there's something over there. Is that a curse echo? Curse of the Seven Mysteries given form? I knew it, there's a curse bearer around here. Is that curse echo what's causing this darkness? It doesn't seem hostile. Is it trying to tell me to come closer? What should I do? No, approaching it would be stupid. I should keep my distance. Decision time, what should I do? If I sit here like this, I risk fulfilling the conditions for that person's curse. It seems like I can still back out if I want, but do I want to? Is that curse echo what's causing this darkness? Nothing's gonna happen if I just sit and wait. Let's check it out. Darn it, now what? This isn't a curse doing this. Somebody's pulling me in. Ah, oh, that hurt. Looks like I'm inside a building. Did it toss me in here? Can't see squat. Is this the same darkness from the curse echo? I'm completely enclosed. Doesn't seem like there's even a window. There's no telling which direction I'm facing. They got me. This has to be the work of another curse bearer. Is this darkness because of a curse echo? Are they trying to trap me here? I guess I should be glad they haven't killed me yet. If I don't start searching for a way out. Shit, I can't see a thing. If only I had a source of light. That's right, I still have the lighter I picked up earlier. Perfect, it works. Now I can make out my surroundings a bit better. What the... something... Drat, he's got a light. That ruins everything. Someone there? Are you a curse bearer? It's over. Time to get out of here. Wait, he's running. Was he right here this whole time? This is my chance. Again, I didn't use the curse. Gah! Ugh! What the? Why? Shogo used it by himself. Huh. Huh. That was a close one. I didn't catch a glimpse of the curse bearer, but it seems like I'm alright. The curse stone of the Whispering Canal has gained 30% soul dregs. His curse must have had something to do with the light and darkness. My guess would be the ever-burning lantern. So there's a connection between the seven mysteries and the way their curses work. That might be useful to know. If the ever-burning lantern is the curse responsible for this, I'd guess maybe it's conditioned to something about me being in total darkness. It's a good thing I had the slider. It seems to have saved me. Okay, I've had a look around the area. I should head somewhere else now. Where to next? First, around Mido, Mido Richo Park, at the end of the South Gasui Street, is the Taiko of Suga Sugaru. North of there is a school called Komo, uh, Komagata High School, at the location of the Fool's Procession. It should be around here. This is Midorichi Park, Midoricho Park, location of the Taiko of Sugaru, uh, Sugaru, one of the seven mysteries. I feel like my reading is getting worse as I go on. Huh? Someone's there. Two men, one middle-aged and the other a young adult, talking to each other. There's a good chance that one of them could be a curse bearer. I'll try to scope things out without being spotted. To pick up their conversation from this distance, I'll have to focus in and watch them for a while, I think. If it looks like I'll be spotted, I'll quickly hide behind a tree to move out of the line of sight. Huh. They were supposed to be around here, but I don't see anyone, boss. No need to get ahead of ourselves. I bet we see something before the night is done. Maybe you're right, but still, the seven mysteries. Huh? 
Was there a noise from behind us just now? Hmm. Never mind. Just my imagination. But does the curse really let you kill someone with an object like that? Hmm? Sorry, something's bugging me. I'm gonna have to check back there. Huh. Nothing. Guess this place is just keeping me on edge. Aha! Sorry, sir. Would you mind if I if we asked you a few questions? Ugh! They found me. Oh, you two are police officers. <laughs> People often say we don't look it. Sorry if we startled you. I'm sure there's no problem, but we'll have to ask you some questions as procedure. Oh, I'm Jun Erio. I'm from the Metro Metropolitan Police Department Investigative Division. Newbie Detective Jun Erio. And this old guy with the scowling mug is Chief Inspector Tetsuo Sutsumi, my superior of officer. You wouldn't guess from the, that frown, but he actually has quite the sweet tooth. Erio, quit blabbering. Veteran Detective Tetsuo Sutsumi. Uh, the gruff police detective that Shogo Okie made in uh, Midoricho Park. Fresh face police detective that Shogo Okie made in Midorichi Park. Eccentric man that Shogo Okie ran into at Honji Bridge. I always imagine detectives as blunt and aggressive, but I guess there are some pleasant ones too. He's an intimidating. He's as intimidating as, as I'd expect a veteran cop to be. First that private detective, now police detectives. Why today of all days? Now first, why is he duck lipping at us? Now first, can you show me some ID with your name, address, and occupation? I'll be okay. I'm better off just going along with it. Wow, you work for Hihaku Soaps. I hear they're, they've been raking it in lately. Is that true? I don't know much about that. I'm just a recent hire. People are loving that new hair product you have. I use it all the time myself. Thank you for your patronage. Ario, you use hair products? Get with the times, boss. Guys nowadays all use all, all... Guys nowadays all use these things. Isn't that right, Mr. Okie? Uh, yeah, sure. We even make men's co cosmetics now. That's so. What a time we live in. Sorry, boss is the kind of caveman who thinks using only a bar of soap for all his washing makes him cool or something. I don't think that. I just don't care enough to use anything else. Actually, we do all have. Uh, actually, we do have all-in-one soaps for just that purpose. There are plenty of people like you. Ha! Huh, hear that, Ario? That's what I'm talking about. You should put out more of those. Aren't you riled up? Anyway, Mr. Okay, what is it that you're doing out here? Uh, actually, I'm searching for the Seven Mysteries. Have you heard of the Seven Mysteries of Honjo, Detective? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of them. We were just talking about them a minute ago. A girl I know is into them. That's how I got interested. I see. I seem to remember even uh, Mido Richo Park had one of the mysteries associated with it. What was it again? Taiko of Sugaru? Ah, that's right, the Taiko of Suguru. Uh, this whole area used to be the residence of Suguru, a clan of samurai. So that's why you were hanging around to, uh, in the middle of the night. Discover anything interesting? Hold on, I'm gonna... There we go. Discover anything interesting? No, nothing. Though I admit I haven't been uh, looking into these things too hard. Right, I think I understand your situation. Thank you for your answers. Now it's quite late, so you'd best be heading home. Why is he duck lipping? Hmm? Something wrong? You're free to go. Uh, excuse me. Since you detectives are around, does that mean something happened around here? <laughs> well, we are investigators, so it is indeed related to a case. But don't worry, there's no threat to civilians whatsoever. We'll be here a while longer looking into things, but you can rest easy. A while longer, huh? That's not good. This may be my only chance. I see. Well, I'll be going now. Take care. Hmm? We're done here. Going home. Uh, 
Uh, I still have the lighter and the curse stone. Well, I am fairly sure one of them is a curse bearer. Getting them to leave will be hard. Maybe I should go somewhere else before they get any more suspicious of me. Koma Gata High School, front gates. Here I am at Koma, Koma Gata High School. Let's see here. Ah, someone's there. Huh? Whoa, what the? Ouch. I'm so sorry, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, but did you just climb over the school gate? Girl in a school uniform came climbing over the front gate. She must be a student here. Hmm, that thing she's hold hiding in her hand. No doubt about it, that's a curse stone. This girl is a curse bearer. That girl, if she's a curse bearer. What's going on? Why are you at school like uh, this late? Uh, well... I'm really sorry. I'm in a big hurry right now, so I gotta go. Hey, wait. Huh? <laughs> a curse! Ugh. Why? It can't be. Mio, I'm sorry. Shogo is just murdering this town. Curse Stone of the Whispering Canal has gained 36% soul drags. That one was strangely easy. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. I killed her! Yes, I got a curse bear. This is working, I just have to keep it up. How many more do I need? One, two. Shoko Okie, 3 a.m. All right, on to the next one. First, the one-sided reed by Rio Goku Bridge. Then the evergreen beach at the former Yasuda Gardens along the Sumida River. Finally, Sumida River. Rio Goku Bridge. Hey, uh, quick question for you. What the? Sorry this is so sudden, but I've got to ask. You don't mind, do you? Are you a curse bearer? What? <sighs> Why would he out himself as a curse bearer like that? Don't tell me it has something to do with activating his curse. Making it obvious that he's curse bearer himself. What's he trying to pull? Maybe he's confident that I can that he can activate his curse before I can activate mine. Got to be careful. How should I respond here? The hell is that? It took too long to answer. Huh? Plus, he glanced behind me when the curse echo appeared. I knew it. You're a curse bearer too. You can stop trying to hide it now. Not that you were doing a very good job. Damn it. Yeah, you're right. I appreciate the honesty. I just want to have a nice, calm little chat. The name's Yutaru uh, Namigaki. My curse echo is the foot washing mansion. Yutaru Namigaki. Uh, the young man encountered at Ryugoku Bridge. He didn't hide the fact that he was a curse bearer. A chat? I'm not going to curse first and ask questions later just because we're both curse bearers. I've got a little more class than that. I hope you're smart enough to extend me the same courtesy. Fine. Chat away. Thank you. Good to know I'm dealing with someone reasonable. Young man, probably younger than me. Maybe a college student? This guy is quite the bold character. He's got confidence. I'll give him that. All right, let's talk. What do you want? Right, I'll cut straight to the chase. Will you join forces with me? Join forces? To gather soul dregs? Yep. 
You're using your curse because there's someone you want to resurrect too, right? In that case, it'd be more effective for the two of us to work together than to do it all by yourself. Think about it. We could split the work and we'd have two kinds of curses at our disposal. Working together. I hadn't thought about that before. Can the soul dregs in one curse stone be moved to another? That's a fundamental requirement for this to work. Well, we'll have to test it, and I can't do that alone either. I see. All right, then. If working together helps us both get what we want, maybe it's not a bad idea. Thanks. Glad to be dealing with someone who can think things through rationally. But there's something I need to know in advance. Tell me. How many soul dregs do you have right now? Right, I have some, of course. I am more than competent, after all. I'm asking you how many. I'm at 1%, but don't worry about it. My curse is so easy to activate, I'll have plenty of time. I'll have plenty in no time. I bet you haven't managed to get any on your own, have you? I'm at 67%. Huh? Say what? That's the amount of soul dregs I have in my curse stone right now. What? Wait, are you serious? You're not even close to being on my level. I'll keep gathering soul dregs on my own. Let's forget all this joining forces business. You've got to be kidding me. Huh. I'll call your bluff. Don't think you can scare me off so easily. I see. That's too bad. If you don't feel like talking, then you leave me no choice. I even give you a chance to come out of this alive. Real shame. You're just going to waste it. What are you? What the? Is this the voice of the curse echo? Among the seven mysteries, the resentful memory of the foot-washing mansion is particularly strong. You can't block it out by plugging your ears. As soon as you hear the voice of my curse echo, it's the end for you. Damn it! Shogo Okie deceased. Uh, foot-washing Shogo. Witness the death of Shogo Okie. My, my, Endo, you seem to have arrived at a less than favorable result. This is mere conjecture on my part, but you have a way to evade curses that no one else is capable of, do you not? Fear not, you may make as many attempts as you please from the converse conversation with Yutaro. Very well, remember to ward off the curse before it is activated. But bear in mind, Shogo Okie has no way of realizing it himself, so you must react for him. I don't think that's a good idea. If I don't make a clean escape, it might cost me my life. Besides, I might still be able to talk, take soul drugs from him. Chat between two curse bearers. What's he trying to pull? Alright, let's talk. What do you want? you're just going to have to trust me, or do you think you can collect them all yourself? I'm at 67%. Huh? Say what? Alright. So it's not this is going nowhere. Try again. The large bridge here is called Ryugo Ryugoku, Ryogoku Bridge. Crossing the river leads to Nihonbashi, Bakurocho, and Chuo City. Second oldest of the many bridges spanning the Sumida River behind Sinju Ohashi during the Great Fire of Meireki in 1657, which destroyed 60 to 70 percent of Ito, many drowned in the Sumida River attempting to swim away from the flames, resulting in the building of bridges to be a major focus of the reconstruction efforts. Although this bridge was simply known as Ohashi, or Great Bridge, when it was first erected, the two people of Ito took to calling it Ryogoku Bridge, or Two Nations Bridge. Due to its location between the provinces of Musashi and Shimosa, and this eventually became its official name. Over time, the wide roads at either side, originally intended as fire breaks, became popular locations for street performances and other events. The bridge was rebuilt following the Great Kanto Earthquake and still stands to this day. The canal where the one sided bridge grew is supposed to be around here somewhere, but now there's no trace of it left.
What the? How did you... Oh, don't mind me. Yucharo said he wants to talk. You'd better answer quickly before. Well, you know what. How do I get out of here? It won't let me leave. Doesn't give me an option after this. If I'm not mistaken, you've already learned how to avoid hearing the voice of the curse echo somewhere. By chance you've forgotten, try reading the how to play in your files. Fear not, you may t make as many attempts as you please from the conversation. All right. <clears throat> uh, files. How to play. Oh, I remember. Options, audio, voice volume. All right, let's talk. What do you want? Sorry, but there's no way I can accept your offer until I know that. Who's to say you won't run away while we're in the middle of testing it? Well, you're just going to have to trust me, or do you think you can collect them all yourself? I'm at 67%. Huh? Say what? That's the amount of soul dregs I have in my curse stone right now. What? Wait, are you serious? You're not even close to being on my level. I'll keep gathering soul dregs on my own. Let's forget all this joining forces business. You've got to be kidding me. Hmm, I'll call your bluff. Don't think you can scare me off so easily. I see, that's too bad. If you don't feel like talking, then you leave me with no choice. I even gave you a chance to come out of this. Alive. Real shame you're just going to waste it. What are you? Among the seven mysteries, the resentful memory of the foot washing mansion is particularly strong. You can't pluck it out by plugging your ears. As soon as you hear the voice of my curse echo, it's the end for you. Damn it. Hmm? A voice? I don't hear any voice. What? There's no way. And yet, there he is, perfectly unharmed. How? What's going on here? I don't completely understand it myself, but his curse conditions don't seem to have met. This is my chance. Yutaru, the, your curse won't work on me. I'll let you off easy today, so get the hell out of here. You son of a... Huh, fine. I'll just be on my way then. But my, mark my words, I'll make you regret this. Ah! 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 Ugh, why? How is this? Cursed Stone of the Whispering Canal has gained 20% soul dregs. Uh, do we get to talk to the girl that was there? Former Yasuda Gardens. There was some kind of incident here recently, so the entrance was closed off. But it was easy enough to sneak in since there are no guards at uh, this time of night. However... So, have you decided what, uh, what you're going to do? With your... 
Oh, so precious. Curse stone. Yeah? As soon as I snuck into the gardens, a woman inside called out from behind me. I've been waiting for you. I have a curse stone. Her sudden proclamation had me at a loss for words, so the woman continued. I have you in a position where I can use my curse on you whenever I please. If you hand over your curse stone, I will at least spare your life. In that moment, all I could squeeze out in, my, in reply was, let me think about it. Which brings us to now. Alright. Damn it, did I expose myself somehow? She said she can use her curse on me any time. Guess I've already fulfilled its conditions. Could be a bluff, but since she seems to have information on me, it's probably true. Can't hand over my curse stone. I need to figure out how her curse is activated and find a way out of here. For now, maybe I can get some information by talking about something that'll catch her interest. What conditions have I fulfilled since the moment I stepped foot in here? Something that I'm still doing even now. Think, what could it be? Maybe something I have on me? If I suddenly strip naked on the spot, I just might be able to avoid her curse. No, that would take too long. She'd probably kill me before I even got my shirt off. Plus, I'd look like a creep. The other possibility is that condition has to do with the location we're in. If being here is what activates the curse of the Evergreen Breach, then I'll continue to meet that condition as long as I'm here. In which case, there's no escape. She'd activate her curse before I ever got away from the gardens. I'm sure I'd recognize it after setting it off, but it's not like I'd get to do things over. So if I can't figure out her curse, I'll have to set off on my own. I don't see how I could make her leave, though. Not while she has the upper hand. All I can think of is to make her use her curse. Damn it. But there's no way I could counterattack after she curses me. Eighty-seven percent. The woman, a woman in her thirties, she has a refined air about her, like she was brought up in a family of high social standing. But I also sense a shadow hanging over her. I wonder if it has to do with this place. Feels weird being in these magnificent gardens after hours. There's not a visitor or groundskeeper in sight. The Rio Goku Public Hall is also on the grounds. Its eye-catching structure makes this place feel even more otherworldly. Lush Green Park administered by Sumida City. As is common in the traditional Japanese gardens, its large central pond is shaped like the character for art. The paths that crisscross its grounds, lined with stone lanterns, are perfect for strolling while appreciating the foliage or bird watching. Uh, the gardens once pulled in water from the Sumida River so that its pond would ebb and flow with the tide. Novelty in Edo, which had begun filling in the bay to support its expansion. But the practice has been discontinued in modern times due to flood prevention measures. Is it something about it being a garden or a lake or us trespassing? Don't tell me you still haven't made up your mind. Such an indecisive man. Wait, um, I might hand over my curse stone depending on certain things. Will you hear me out for a moment? Sure, go on. If we're going to talk, we should get to know each other better. My name is Shogo. Stop. Huh? Let's not do that, all right? If I know your name, I might start to feel sorry for you. And have a harder time killing you. You would? Don't you think? Seven. Well, what if you just tell me your name? Why? Well, I need to call you something. Then call me ma'am. Huh. Uh, all right, ma'am. Yes, what is it? Ah, oh, this is bad. She's completely running the show here. Six. I've had enough. Two curse bearers. Shouldn't be carrying on like this. Five. If you take my curse stone, what are you going to do with it? With your curse stone? It's brimming with soul dregs, isn't it? It's already killed so many, no? How does she know so much? 
I'd like to avoid such crude methods myself. For... Can you take soul dregs from other curse bearer stones and add them to your own? Who knows? But... You have to admit it's worth trying. So basically, you want soul dregs, but you steal the ones others have gathered because you don't want to get your own hands dirty. You're half right, but half wrong too. I don't mind getting my hands dirty. I just want to end this with, a little with as little trouble as possible. Understand. Three. How do you know you haven't already set off my curse? Go on then, use it. If I had, you could have activated it without all that bluster. And yet here you are. Damn. Does she already know about it? Or about that student from before? But if she already knows what would activate it, she wouldn't have hide it. Because if you know what activates my curse, there's no way you would set it off yourself. So she must not know yet. I still have a chance. Listen. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. About what? Talking like this instead of killing you immediately. It's just a whim of mine. What I mean to say is that you were never in a position to bargain. Two. You actually can't kill me, can you? And that strange countdown from before, too. It's all just a bluff to threaten me. I don't give in to threats, so why don't you give this up and... If that's the case, give it a try then. Only two more, now. Let me tell you the number. One. This conversation is over. Zero. Such a shame. What? This is the end for you. Farewell. No! Ugh! Fire! Fire! It's so hot! It burns! Fire! Of course! That's what it was! Ugh! That guy! Damn it! He must have been following me! But it's already too late! Shogo Okie deceased. Haunting Shogo. Witness the death of Shogo Okie. My, my, Ando, you seem to have arrived at a less than favorable result. It was not all in vain, however, as you finally realized how the curse is activated. Fear not, you may make as many attempts as you please from the conversation with the lady. Very well. Remember how to ward off the curse when you return. But bear in mind, Shogo Okie has no way of realizing himself, so you must direct him. Um, I don't know what it was. Damn it, did I expose myself somehow? the slider. Why did I suddenly get the impulse to do that? Yes, really. Throw it away. Not sure why, but here goes nothing. 100 yen lighter discarded. Hmm? What did you just... Why throw your lighter away all of a sudden? Huh. Uh, well, I just kind of felt like it. Uh, how? Why is she losing it all of a sudden? Could that lighter have been what fulfilled the condition of her curse? But why? How did I... Mm. How could you? Uh. Uh. 
This can't be. Uh, my Shuichi. Cursed Stone of the Whispering Canal has gained 25% soul drags. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. Whew! That was too close for comfort. Was that just coincidence? Not only was I able to release myself from her curse, she immediately panicked and ran away, fortunately for me. If she'd kept her cool and stayed, we would have been at a stalemate. Oh, I should have checked my curse stone. Should have gained a lot just now. What the? Ah! Story chart unlocked. Pardon the interruption, but I'd like to take this chance to tell you about the story chart. This is the screen which will appear when you open the story chart. From here, not only can you see the overall structure of the current story, you can also progress along different branching routes by playing past stories over again. We could call this exactly the power that Shogo Okie had sought after. Normally, you would have been able to use the story chart feature freely. However, due to certain circumstances, it has been locked until now. From here on, you will return to the story chart from time to time at breaks in the story. At those times, you will choose for yourself which story you wish to continue next. Use the story chart button on the menu to quit playing a chapter and return to the story chart. If you quit midway through a chapter that you haven't finished, you'll have to restart again from the beginning. Completed chapters can be resumed from various points in the chapter. Uh, the game will not return to a previous game state when resumed. If you return to the story chart by using the suspend command that appears at certain points, it is the same as quitting and returning to the story chart. There are two phases that must be completed to fully complete a chapter. The chapter is finished while there are still tasks to be done. The chapter will not dim and will remain lit up. Best of luck on your journey, Ando. By the way, should you use the story chart to replay the past event, do you know what you must do and where? Of course you do. After all, you have gotten this far. What trigger did Yoko Fukunaga set off that led to her dying the way she did? You've come this far several times, so I have every confidence you will be all right. As long as you make sure not to do that thing. However, like with the lighter and voice earlier, Shogo Okie has no way of knowing that himself. Ah, on that note, I am curious. Have you determined how many people Shogo Okie has killed with his curse? Uh, darkness bearer? Uh, Schoolgirl? Uh, rich girl? Um, the, the dude with the legs? And then Yoko. So five? <laughs> I see, I see. So that is your understanding of things. As it turns out, the correct answer is zero. That's what I said. Aha, that is correct. I am pleased to see you have such a solid grasp of events. I think you will be fine, just fine. Who done it? Answer the storyteller's question correctly. Please continue the story at your leisure from the story chart screen. Kinshibori Park. Whoa. What the hell? It feels like the air just changed. Something's got Yoko really rattled. I feel eyes on my back. I can't move. Is there something behind me? Yoko, are you okay? Eh, what's wrong? Stay with me. No, this can't be. Yoko, Yoko! It's no use. She's in no condition to talk. 
Huh? What? Is calling her name really gonna help? I'm already yelling at it as hard as I can. Shouldn't I look for what's causing this? There's nothing there. Yoko, hang in there, Yoko. Look at me. You're gonna be okay. It's alright. There's nothing there. Ah. Yoko! Shogo cries Yoko's name in a desperate attempt to wake her as she lies and moving on her ground. Will us please get through to her? We're back at 1am again. Hmm. Huh. Oh, good. You're awake. What? I, um... Are you okay? You were so rattled and confused, I thought you'd really lost it. Do you feel dizzy? Have a headache? Are your humors off balance? Wait, what did you just say? I think I've heard that before. You're the one who said it earlier. Oh right, that might have been it. My humors were off balance. What, back there? You ended up like that because of your humors? Yeah, I've heard that at this age your humors being even a little bit off can be fatal. I'm glad you're back to normal now. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause you so much trouble. But I really don't remember what happened. Hmm, sounds like what happened to me. Maybe this place is dangerous somehow. What? Are you backing out? Yeah, it just doesn't feel safe to me, and I'm worried about you. Let's call off today's investigation. Come on, I just started feeling back to normal too. Nope, not happening. Go home. I'll even pay your cab fare, okay? I ended up having to force a uh, still protesting Yoko into a taxi. Even then, she still wouldn't stop complaining. So to placate her, I promised I'd search the park for, on my own for a little while longer. Okay. We have opened up an alternate timeline. Uh, worried about Yoko after a bizarre incident, Shogo decides to call off their investigation into the mysteries for the night. Despite her stubborn objections, he manages to persuade her by offering to continue the search on his own. So this will be 5 a.m. 5 a.m. Kinshibori Park. In further news... Before dawn today, a police officer on patrol discovered a man collapsed in a Sumida City Park. The man was taken to a hospital, but his death was confirmed shortly after. Investigations are still underway, but police suspect a connection to the other unexplained deaths found in the area at around the same time. Paranormal site. The Seven Mysteries of Hanjo. Written and directed by Takanari Ishiyama. Producer Kazuma Oshi Oshu. Assistant producer Kais Kaisuke Nakamura. Character design, Jin Kobayashi. Development, uh, Zine Inc. The Rite of Resurrection, you complete the prologue. That was just the fucking prologue? That was two hours of my life, what? Well done in your efforts thus far. This brings Shoko, Shogo Okie's story to a close. Ah, but this is not the end, far from it. In fact, this is where the story finally begins. The roots of the three protagonists have now been unlocked. Harue uh, Shigima, a woman who lost her son when he was kidnapped and murdered. Tetsuo Satsumi, the chief inspector of the first inve investigative division, who is looking into the death of an officer in the line of duty. 
Yako Sakazaki, a high school girl who wants to bring her friend back from the dead, a girl who died in a suspicious suicide. Each of them is burdened with the circumstances that leave them no choice but to seek the right of resurrection. Following these three storylines will reveal the full nature of all that is occurring. With that, please enjoy the continuation of this tale. Um... All right, uh, I think I'm gonna cut the video there, uh, and then we will work through, I think, Tetsuo or Yako uh, next video. Um, I enjoyed that, despite it just being the prologue and it being two hours long. Um, the one thing that I kind of noticed that I would change just for like user experience, uh, there was one point where it popped up and he had the, um, the tutorial, the files, all that information. Uh, and then he had his little wrap up after the files were unlocked. I would just kind of switch those uh, just for user experience because it would be a lot better to go through all of the things that he was experiencing, all the things he was feeling, all the things that he was understanding, uh, and then get the files rather than have them pop up like right in the middle of whatever he was saying. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you guys as always for joining me for another night of Strange and Scary Games. I love you. I will see you in the next video. Good night.